Hey folks, greetings from the Offensive Security Group here at Secure IT 360, coming at you with a new episode of the Cyber Threat Perspective. Uh, we have a very special guest here today, again with us, uh, and I'm also joined by Darius, who's another special guest, not to you know <laughs> downplay Darius at all, um, but uh, yes, uh, we have a new episode uh, and we have a very special guest here, John Hammond is on the show with us. Um, so John is a cybersecurity researcher, researcher hacker, uh, otherwise, you know, big friend of the community, uh, does a lot of stuff in the space. So John, I know there's a thousand things you could be doing with your time. Uh, so I appreciate you coming on with us and kind of nerding out a little bit, talking about cybersecurity stuff. Well, hey, thank you. Uh, thanks so much for letting me come crash the party. I uh, hope I'm not cramping your style too much, but I don't know, Spencer, Darius, it's great to be here with you all. And, and just thank you for having me. Happy to be here. <laughs> Yeah, awesome. Thank you. I appreciate it. Um, and we appreciate you being here and, and chopping it up with us. So um, kind of the first thing I was curious of, uh, just kind of selfish me, you know, being a security person and, and following, you know, what you've done over the years and like watching a lot of the YouTube videos you've made and stuff like that is how, what's your superhero origin story? Like I was saying in the pre-show, I was like, uh, when did you become a nerd? Or like, when did you get interested in computers? Like, how did that become a thing for you? Oh, goodness. Oh, okay. Well, hey, I'll give a super duper quick background on just kind of me and then uh, speed run up to <laughs> where I, I, I suppose I am today with the origin story all mixed in. Um, so if folks aren't familiar, uh, my name is John Hammond. I work as a security researcher at a company called Huntress for my day job. Uh, I also have a YouTube channel kind of on the side where I showcase a whole lot of cybersecurity education, training, programming, capture the flag, just nerd, geeky, computer hacker stuff. It's a ton of fun. Um, um, but it, I don't know, I guess uh, saying it came from humble beginnings is such a dumb thing to say, but, uh, <laughs> So when I was a, a young kiddo, a uh, little whippersnapper, I had thought, you know, like, man, I want to have a website. I think that would be really cool. <laughs> I think all these folks out on the interwebs, uh, they've got their own like home stake in the ground for, for their land on real estate across the internet airwaves. And I thought I should have a website. So I asked my dad at the time, I guess it was like nine or 10. And I was like, hey, how do I have a website? And he taught me a little bit of HTML, uh, CSS, uh, just stuff to like, I don't know, build out a, a cheesy web page. Uh, mm -hmm. And then he said, well, hey, if you want to host a website, you should probably have a web server. Like you need to have a server to be able to put this out on the Internet. Uh, and he got me like an old school Dell Optiplex, like running Turbo Linux in the ancient days. Um, and for whatever reason, we were he was generous enough to like, let me hook it up in, in our basement. And we had a little server just connected out to the Internet and hosting stupid HTML. Um, but that opened the floodgates because I wanted to learn what the heck is this Linux thing? Like, okay, mm -hmm. if I want to do more with this and I, now I thought, realize like, Oh, I, I want to make video games. I want to be like any other cool person growing up. I want to, uh, I want to be a hacker. Like I see in the movies. So I found and researched and Googled around online. I stumbled across Eric S Raymond, like one of the kind of big names in the, a lot of free and open source software movements that had said, Hey, if you want to be a, a hacker, then you should know how to program. You should be a programmer mm -hmm. first. Um, so he had suggested Python and sort of his blog and article. And I thought I'd go Google and research and learn Python with lots of YouTube videos and tutorials. And that was just the snowball effect. Like, all right, what is Linux? What is Python? How do I put all this together? Um, and it's just been a lot of fun. Uh, yeah. learning about that ever since, I suppose. <laughs> so, so you were, you know, nine, 10 years old, setting up a lamp stack in your basement. <laughs> <laughs> Not yeah, a very so good I'm, one, but yeah. Yeah. So what I'm hearing is it runs in the family. That's, that's what I picked up on. Yes. Yeah. My, my father, all kudos and credit to him, uh, was a network engineer for a lot of, uh, local radio stations. Um, nice. and he just sort of, I don't know, was running the show on himself. He was kind of his own boss to do what he did to, for consulting and client work, but you need to have a little bit of computer smarts to be able to pull that off. So, uh, I suppose it does run in the family. Yeah. <laughs> nice. Nice. So you're doing all of this, uh, and I guess like the question I have for you is, um, man, like how is how do you feel like your passion has evolved kind of over time? Ooh, super good question. Uh, so I started with a lot of like programming and coding and just trying to make software and learn how to, again, make video games or whatever. Uh, it wasn't until I sort of got into what would be my undergrad education for college, university. I went to one of the military institutions, like the Coast Guard Academy, and they care much more about 
the security of stuff <laughs> like hey it's cool that you can make this thing it's cool that you can build this but is it safe is it secure is it battle tested and battle ready mm -hmm. um it's not so much can you make something but can anyone break that something yeah um, so that is where i fell into capture the flag and vulnerabilities and exploits and cves and all this threat hunting pen testing red team blah but that's been fun uh, but as you were asking about sort of the trajectory, where did you find maybe the passion grow or change? Um, my current day job Huntress is where I find a whole lot of fulfillment because it, it, it's addressing the other side of like, look, it's cool to hack stuff and break stuff and have the sexy Hollywood hacker, but mm -hmm. you know, we have to make things secure and, and improve the security landscape. So I find it really fulfilling and really meaningful when, Hey, there's a hot new zero day on the streets. Uh, let's dig into it. Let's try to understand how it happens, how it works. What are the artifacts yep. that are left behind? And I, being able to try to get that information out to as many people as possible and seeing the difference that it makes, if we can be proactive, help people sleep at night. Uh, that is where I find a really, really, I don't know, strong sense of fulfillment. And I'm loving that. Mm that work <laughs> yeah and it makes sense because it you know going to naval academy right and it being it seeming to me as an outsider being very mission driven right you seem very mission driven in that so that makes sense to me that you would you'd say that and kind of describe it that way um and i i think that's cool because you know coming me and darius are our pen testers but we come from sysadmin backgrounds so sure. we're we're all in it and and we did a lot of sysadmin stuff and even though, you know, we like breaking things and breaking into places, um, we, you know, I don't want to speak for Darius, but we get a lot of fulfillment out of finding those weaknesses for, for, for people and, and saying, Hey, you got this issue here. Let's, you know, let's put a hole in it and, and, uh, fix that for you. So I think there is a lot of similarities between a lot of the different things. And I think the mission, like you said, is a really important thing is doing it for the right reasons and not just doing it to be flashy and, you know, kind of, <laughs> you know, that kind of thing is, is is a good motivator right it's a good motivator thank you yeah i think it i don't know i i can't tie it to any sort of like oh professionalism in air quotes or like maturity gross that feels kind of icky to say but i i had a lot of conversations with a lot of people that i idolize and i think are mentors and real champions in the space um and they say like hey the whole purpose of penetration testing or red team or ethical mm -hmm. hacking is just to feed and keep offering yeah, better detections and info for those detection engineers, for those defenders, for those yep. sysadmins that like, hey, really have to protect this stuff. Yep. Uh, it's funny. It's a state of like perpetually trying to make your own job harder. I think when mm -hmm. you're a pen tester, yeah. But it, it's it's the right way to go. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I was just talking about this uh, on the Trimark uh, happy hour. I was nice. just sitting with all those folks over there. And, you know, we were talking about Locksmith, which is an open source tool mm. that uh, Jay Kildreth at Trimark created, and I'm helping maintain it. It's a PowerShell-based tool to find issues with AD certificate services. Nice. But what differentiates it from the other tools is it doesn't do any exploitation. It actually gives you a script or like a one-liner to go out and fix stuff. So mm. um, it's really neat. Um, and it's a different take on using a tool to do some, like what you said, do do a defensive thing or to do good by improving things. And I use it as a pen tester, which is kind of weird, right? You think a <laughs> pen tester would be all exploitation and stuff, but I find that clients really like that, right? People like that there's a way to fix things. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, that is awesome. I think so, like when you hand over a report, and I mean, I'd love to ask, uh, and I'd love to pick your brain on that just as well. Like, it's one thing to have the report where, like, hey, check it out, I broke this thing, and then I absolutely obliterated yep. that thing, and then I smashed and annihilated that thing. Yeah. But like, cool. <laughs> the real actionable yep. intel and the really helpful stuff is like, hey, here are the steps to mitigate. Here's how to remediate. Here's how we can patch this. Like, yep. I think that is just, I don't know, invaluable for the client yep. or the customer. <laughs> No, agree yep. wholeheartedly. I think that's why, you know, our team, we try to do a really good job of not just saying, hey, we broke your stuff. Here you go. Have fun. <laughs> and we, really, we really try to, you know, really focus on remediation as far as like, hey, here are the exact steps you need to do to resolve this issue. And so the next time we do this, um, our jobs are harder, like you said. Yep. Spencer, can I ask you, uh, Locksmith, right, as you were alluding to with the whole lot of the Active Directory certificate mm -hmm. services, like ADCS, I feel like there's a lot of 
runway there. Yeah. <laughs> is that fair to say? Like, hey, if you can beat that up, then that might yeah. be a quick easy button. For <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. There, it it is. It can be very uh, a quick easy button. And the folks at Spectre Ops, uh, who did a lot of that initial research, which came out of a lot of the research that Benjamin Delpy did, um, mm. who was the, one of the creators of Mimi Cats, right, or the main creator of Mimi Cats. A lot of the research I just learned recently came from a lot of stuff that he did. And the Spectrop folks kind of made it into a white paper and kind of more, you know, publicized it. But at any rate, yeah, it's it's a it's a great way to get a quick win if you're a, a bad actor, um, because uh, there's some easy wins that you can just kind of click right through, and there's some security tools that that make it fairly easy to to exploit. Um, but you know, we see it's it's one of those things that you just people kind of set it up and kind of forget that it's there. Um, and you know, you kind of need to understand how it works and how to administer it and how to do it securely to make sure that there's not, you know, some gaping holes in it, uh, and stuff that's really going to bite you. So yeah, there's, there's definitely a lot of runway there for sure. Man, I feel like that is always at least a little bit of the, the crux of the issue. Like, Hey, we, we get some technology as part of the stack, uh, and it's sort of set and forget. Uh, cause look, there are a thousand other things to do because sure. Hey, a business has to run the business and operations and sales and marketing and all that yada, yada, mm -hmm. yada. Uh, I know tech it security sometimes kind of falls to the wayside. Um, and even, even the engineers, even the technicians and folks are always, Yep. Uh, chasing fires and, and cruising through tickets uh, and you just sort of forget, hey, here are all the things in the peripherals. Man, one of them could very well be a, a, a gaping yep. security hole, but it's a matter of digging into that and, and getting those configurations yep. and hardening. Yeah. And, you know, a lot of IT people, and I'm sure you see this, you know, at Huntress, they're wearing many hats, right? They're small businesses, oh, yeah. they're SMBs, they're MSPs that are doing a lot of different things uh, and have to wear a lot of men you know, a lot of hats, you know, they're configuring group policy one day and, you know, their PKI infrastructure the next. And like you said, responding to the tickets and fixing printers. And, you know, that feeds to that cycle of just not being able to, to be an expert at everything. Well, Hey, you're fighting the good fight. Any of those folks tuning in, uh, more power to you and kudos. And I hope we can help where we can. Yeah. <laughs> not a lot yeah, for that. sure. For sure. So I, I had a question kind of on that note, like, you know, you're, uh, for a lot of IT people and a lot of security people, they're wearing many hats, right? And, and they're, they're putting out a lot of fires. Um, I'm curious how you've developed, um, you know, your own skill at learning, right? Like how, how do you approach learning something new or a topic that you're not familiar with? Because I think, you know, you share a lot about, you know, reverse engineering stuff and coding and a lot of different topics. And, you know, you were new at that at some point um, and you're displaying it to the world and kind of learning in public, which is also very admirable, right? <laughs> um, but I I'm curious what your approach is to like learning something new or digging into a topic that you're not familiar with. And, and maybe that helps people who are kind of wearing many hats and or want to get into something new. Oh man, that's a super good question. And I, I feel like I'm going to have like a bad or a crappy answer, <laughs> or maybe folks just won't like it. I don't know. I, over time I had went in that, uh, I want to learn everything. I need to be a sponge. I'm trying to absorb and understand as much as I can. And now I feel like I'm in a little bit of the grind in the rat race, just keep doing what we do. So if I hearken back to those days of like, I, I, I just want to become more of a master of the craft that I can be, uh, I did realize a couple things, uh, and I don't know maybe if any of those will be worthwhile to impart uh, for those interested, but I, I have, and this is going to be the part that sucks. This is going to be the answer that no one wants to hear, <laughs> given the scenario of wearing many hats. Uh, hard fact, cold truth, you cannot multitask. Like as much as you think that you can, as much as you mm. want to like pressure yourself and believe that you have to, I'm sorry. I know it sucks. It's a hard pill to swallow, but I really don't think you can, uh, especially if you want to fully absorb and I don't know, just dive into something. Mm. Uh, there's a hard lesson to learn and a hard pill to swallow. And maybe some folks will disagree, but I feel like the only way that I got to dive into something with this sort of cannonball mentality was I have to set a, aside time, eight hours, I don't know, yep. four, six, whatever I can cram into the night and maybe even stay up crazy late at night just because I have to. Uh, that's the only time I could focus. Um, 
because I think there are a lot of things that people tend to say or think, or they say, Hey, you know, time is the most valuable resource. Time is the only uh, hiccup and stumbling block in our life. Uh, I would pivot that and twist that a little bit because I'm not going to say, oh, whatever, you'll find time, you'll make time in the corners and crevices of your schedule. I know that's not realistic either, but I will say the really most valuable resource, like the most valuable resource in your life is focus. Uh, And sometimes you just need to fully dedicate yourself to one thing if you want to learn and absorb and just, I don't know, become the best that you can at one thing. Mm -hmm. It's focus. (laughs) Yeah. So keeping keeping that in mind, I'm curious. So you say focus. How do you handle balancing the multitude of things that you do? So you're working at Huntress. You have the YouTube channel on the side. I'm sure there are also other things you want to learn. So you know, where do you where do you find that balance? Oh, I don't. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, that's a great myth, right? Like anybody who says they have balance <laughs> is, is either lying to themselves or to everybody else. Yeah. No, man. I feel like it, again tough question um but whenever i get asked that like hey man how are you dealing with burnout what about fatigue what about that imposter syndrome no like uh, i eat burnout for breakfast (laughs) and and i i say that in jest but it's uh it's because of that passion it's because of like hey i'm so fascinated by something i'm sure everyone listening in like there's something that you're so fascinated by and you want to learn all about uh that's that drive and that ambition that you will maybe suffer through the the sleepless nights sometimes uh and that balance is going to go way way off uh but that's okay if you're like totally understanding and accepting of that like dude something's going to come up at work you're going to have to burn some vacation time i don't know like weekends are just going to fall away like uh, that's Mm. okay and understanding and i don't know if that's the answer everyone wants to hear but i think that's one answer uh you just sort of accept I'm okay with being unbalanced for a little bit. Cause I'll reorient and find the compass sure. over time. Hmm. Yeah. So you, you heard it here first, become a hermit, uh, <laughs> focus, focus on one thing. <laughs> <laughs> Am I giving bad advice guys? Was this a mistake? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, not at all. I mean, I think, I think it's interesting hearing everybody's perspective on, um, on topics like that, right? Because I think everybody has a little bit of inspiration and kind of wisdom in that regard, right? You've been able to uh, accomplish a lot in what you've done. And so there's value there and there's there's things that people can take away. And I think the important thing for people too is, you know, take what works for you. Like you don't have to do it the John Hammond way, right? right. Like you, could, you don't have to do it the Darius way or or, or whatever. It's like, you find that little gem that's like, oh, that's a really good idea. I'm going to take that and kind of incorporate it in my life or in in the way I do things. And that's how I look about. That's how I think about things. Is you know, if I follow somebody uh, online and I'm like, oh, that's really good. I like that. And it's like, wake up at 4 a.m. and like go to the gym for four hours. And I'm like, well, I have five kids, so that's <laughs> I, I'm like waking up in the middle of the night anyway. So waking up at 4 a.m not going to work for me. But for a lot of people that does work, right? They wake up, they, you know, work out for an hour, they journal, like it works, you know, it, however it works best for you. And that's the, I think a lot of the lesson too, is taking lessons from other people and trying it, see if it seeing if it works and then incorporating it in your lifestyle. Um, so we got really deep in some life stuff here. I like it. <laughs> <laughs> Super sorry. I don't know if that was uh, what we were aiming towards, but no, this, no, this that's perfect. That's good. I think I I think it's great. I think we got into that topic. Uh, like I thought about that getting into that topic for a reason for that. You know, just hearing people's approach to that because a lot of the the podcast episodes we do are fairly technical or at least a high level, right? And yeah. so I think it is nice to kind of get away from that a little bit and kind of talk about life skills and just you know life stuff in general. I think is is helpful. Now we checked the box. We said we said PowerShell. We said the word Active Directory. That's good. That's all we yeah, need. Yeah, you right? said pen testing and, and red team and <laughs> got all the buzzwords all in there. Yeah, yeah. So I do want to segue a little bit to kind of the the topic of content creation and brand management, uh, just because it seems like nowadays, especially if you whether you want to land a job or you know kind of elevate yourself it seems like you have to be online doing some 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 form of social media and you have to have a brand for yourself so really curious on kind of what you think what your thoughts are on that oh okay uh i 
I think on this one a lot because I know there is, I think, a, a, a certain perspective that you have to be creating content and become an influencer and be all over LinkedIn, Twitter, blah, 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 uh, to land a job or to be present in the community and to just be a valued like member of the industry. And I would, if I if it's okay, I would like to break that down because like you you don't have to. You absolutely mm -hmm. do not. There are hundreds, thousands incredible people that are chipping away and, and don't need whatever stupid spotlight of the internet. Um, I will note that I think it can help if you are trying to land a job or just trying to build up a little bit of your own self notoriety. Um, and I, I, I'm very biased, right? I, I've fallen into that on my own. Maybe it's survivorship bias. I don't know. Um, but I, I want to acknowledge that if you just don't want to be an influencer in air quotes, like you don't, don't, you don't have to, but I think it really, really helps your own learning. I think it helps everyone else's learning. I think it helps the industry when you share, like when you try to document and like publicly give out what you're learning, what you're practicing, what you're getting into, uh, because it, for one thing, helps everyone in that feedback loop. And sure, if you go into some cheesy job interview or you're trying to get a resume out the door, like, hey, you've got this library, you've got mm. this catalog and archive of look at all this work that I've done, look at how I practiced, yep. look at how I played. Um, and that, I think that demonstrates a lot of competency that's really, really hard to gauge from, hey, here's a checkbox certificate or here's a scratch and sniff sticker degree from East Cupcake community, right? <laughs> Sorry, I, I say these in general. I love it. I love it. <laughs> East Cupcake community, I love it. So I wonder if, do you have like a sense of responsibility to kind of give back and kind of share what you've learned? Because one thing that I saw somebody recently, it was Heath Adams actually on LinkedIn. Oh, yeah. He shared a comment that like, if you learn something or you've, you have a certain level of knowledge, um, you know, he was very adamant about giving back to the community and it's probably why he does what he does and it has his thing. Um, but I wonder if you have a sensitive, uh, a sense of like responsibility to kind of give back in that way. And I wonder if that kind of fuels some of that passion that you have to, to kind of create content and, and do that thing. Yeah, I, I think so. It's, it's not something that I think about a lot, I'll admit, but I think you're totally right. Cause I, I, I'm understanding of the way that I learned and maybe got to where I am in, in my own life came from free education and information out uh, online and in the world. Uh, like that's, that's how I learned uh, stand mm. on the shoulders of giants. Um, and I don't know, mm. it feels like a, a I want to contribute to, I, I want to have a seat at that table. So I want to be there with everyone contribute yep. and, and, and rising up the community there's a cheesy uh i think slogan or capture that we tend to say in a couple of communities like a rising tide raises all ships mm -hmm. but man it, it, that's so right <laughs> that's yep. how we all got to where we got today uh yep. so let's pay it forward the best way we can yeah for sure that's one of the things i love about the infosec community is it's it's a very there's a very strong sense of giving uh giving talks and, and giving presentations yeah. and writing tools and like publishing free information. And it's kind of like, um, a, a perpetual thing where, you know, you learn something that you learn from somebody else and you can, you share that, like you're, you're, um, you know, talking about, so that that's cool. If I may, I do think uh, a super important thing on that is, Hey, credit where credit is due. <laughs> sure. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I, don't forget. Uh, I, I know it's totally cool if you're regurgitating or recycling or maybe spinning around something that maybe someone else has done. Uh, if you don't mind, it's really, really nice. Uh, and it may be a good courtesy to say like, hey, you know, I got this original idea. I'm, I'm standing on the shoulders of giants from yeah. Heath, from Ben, from Dave. Uh, there's nothing wrong with that. I think that's a really keep, good way to, again, keep growing the community because now someone might say, Hey, I, I don't know, Dave, I've never heard of Ben. I want to go see what they're up to. And mm -hmm. that's a great thing. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> um, I, one thing I wanted to get into before we wrap up here in, in a few minutes is kind of transition a little bit to, we were talking about cyber and we were kind of talking about it. And then we kind of got into life stuff, which is great. <laughs> um, I kind of want to like circle around a little bit and talk about, cybersecurity again for sure um, and kind of infosec and kind of the issues that we're faced with today right and organizations are faced with today 
Um, and you see a lot of stuff, um, you know, you're in the weeds, a lot of it and in it, you know, like really in it with a lot of stuff day in, day out. So I'm curious what you think are, are maybe some of the more pressing or serious issues that organizations are facing today and kind of what are some maybe the things that, that they're doing to combat some of that, you know, like what are some things that you see are, are kind of the most prevalent issues and, and kind of how do you see that being combated maybe? Huh. Okay. Um, it, it's, it's hard to kind of paint with broad strokes kind of across the industry, but I do think we have sort of spread out the problem <laughs> in a, in a, in a weird way. Like, yeah, sure. Cybercrime threats, malware hackers, blah, blah, blah. Um, and we all know we can kind of just press the, I believe button. Yes. I know there are threats on the landscape. Um, but when we kept piling into a whole lot of security, the best way that we could, it was detection and then prevention and then, uh, DNS filtering. I don't know anything mechanism that we can latch onto AI buzzword, whatever. Uh, I think we have spread out the problem in different directions because we did endpoint security, but now we're getting into a lot more user security and identity. Uh, something that I think we've been leaning in again for day job, but it's, it's understanding that like, Hey, you're using cloud providers and you're using these OAuth single sign on capabilities grabbing onto those tokens, grabbing onto that identity is what will give an actual adversary the keys of the kingdom. Uh, and those headlines that we keep reading about, all the stuff in the media, oh, screaming and shouting about ransomware. Someone's got hit, some systems are down, blah, blah, blah. I think an even more sinister one that just isn't as sexy when it's not in the newspapers is uh, a lot of those info stealers. A lot of those things that will just compromise who you are, uh, whether it's your Google account on your phone or whether it's the Microsoft email that you use for your business. Uh, sorry. I, I realized I went on a tangent. Uh, yeah, no, that's great. <laughs> that That's kind of where I was going with it too, was like organizations and personal identities too, or YouTube channels like Linus. Right. And oh, yeah. I know that was um, covered quite extensively and like the, the core things that we are, are our identities. Right. And, you know, getting access to someone's password vault or their computer is, you know, just as good these days as getting access to an entire network. Um, so I think that is an important consideration too. And I know that's something you cover a lot in, in a lot of your videos is info stealers and reversing the malware uh, and stuff like that. But it's an interesting debate uh, and an interesting conversation nonetheless. The latter end of your question there though, hey, what are we doing to help combat that? Um, it's tough. I know it feels like we're on a little bit of a treadmill, uh, but I... It's the boring, basic, stupid stuff we've been screaming and shouting about for the longest time. Uh, that user awareness, that education, don't click on links, yada, yada, yada. Uh, when we keep trying to add tech, we keep trying to add a whole lot of, hey, what about this antivirus? What about this browser extension that will stop all those? Uh, we keep padding the problem with <laughs> more of the problem. <laughs> sure. Uh, yeah, we, I, we try, to, try, to, try to fill the holes, right? But in doing so, we just create more smaller holes maybe you know if you <laughs> can picture that <laughs> it definitely feels like anytime anyone asks that question a lot of times the answer is like are you doing the basics like yeah. you know and you know, asset are you even doing asset management and a lot of times like it's like nope and it's just like well start there <laughs> and it makes me cry like i hate having to have to fall back on the same trite cliche oversaturated answer but uh the basics the basics. <laughs> yep. User education, though, is paramount to me. I think getting people aware and trained up and just understanding of the threats that are out there, uh, that I, that's the best shield and sword that you've got here in that fight. Um, so I, I hope that's kind of why I try to do what I do. Um, mm -hmm. And if I may, maybe that's the right wrap up and message here. Uh, look, spread the word and share the knowledge and just help other people in the industry be more advised, be better informed. Uh, Cause that's the best, uh, again, uh, the best we can do. <laughs> mm -hmm. So I do have one last question before we wrap up. Um, and it's just, is there anything coming up that you're looking forward to, whether it's an event, whether it's a tool, just, you know, anything you're looking forward to. I am looking forward to DEF CON and Hacker Summer Camp and getting all of us nerds and geeks and friends together for a little bit of a family reunion. I am just excited to celebrate all the awesome, incredible work that we do, part of the industry. And I think it's time to maybe 
maybe put our feet up uh, and relax and have fun for a little bit. I'm looking forward to hacker summer camp. <laughs> nice. <laughs> awesome. Cool. Well, we're going to wrap up. Uh, but John, if you want to let people know where they can follow you, I know at the top of the episode, you, you mentioned uh, a lot of different places, maybe just mention where people can follow you or if they want to just, you know, check out your videos and whatnot. Oh, thanks so much. Yeah, super quick. Uh, YouTube is sort of my, I guess, main stage, quote unquote, platform. Just my name, John Hammond. Uh, silly looking redhead kid. You should be able to <laughs> pick me out pretty quick and easy. Um, but of course, LinkedIn, Twitter, uh, just underscore John Hammond. Um, and please don't hesitate to reach out. Don't be a stranger. Happy to chat. Awesome. Awesome. Well, thanks, Darius. Thanks, John, uh, for being a guest on the show today. Uh, we really appreciate your time. Uh, and that's it. That's our show today. Uh, if you enjoyed this episode, uh, we'd be more than awesome. Be, it would be more than awesome, uh, I guess is the correct word. Uh, if you share it, um, share it with your friends, colleagues, uh, all that you know stuff, like, comment, subscribe, uh, helps us reach more people and get some cool, awesome guests like John on the show to, to talk, uh, talk shop with us. So that's our episode. Uh, you can find us on offsec.blog and at secureit360.com. And we'll see everybody next time.